So this is what we did last time. Discussing hypothesis testing. So what you have, you have a hypothesis, some claim about the population. So usually some specific numerical parameter of characteristic numerical parameter of the population. And that's your claim. This is called the null hypothesis. And the name of the game is that you want to reject it, try to reject it. So you pick a sample and based on evidence in the sample, you either reject it, reject this hypothesis with a significance alpha, which means that there is only a small, so alpha times 100 percent probability that H naught is actually true. Since you are making a decision based on some evidence, you can't be 100 percent sure. It's just a statistical evidence, not a mathematical proof. So you reject it if you collect a lot of evidence and you have a significance associated with your rejection. That's this number. Usually you choose it to be a small number, let's say 0 0.05, so that if you end up rejecting it based on evidence, there's only a 5% chance that this hypothesis is actually true and you rejected it wrongly. Or you fail to reject it. If you fail to reject it, usually you do not have any particular number associated with it. You just fail to reject it. And if you reject, when you reject, this implies an alternate hypothesis. H1 is true. And the chance of, so H1 is complementary to H0. So if H0 is wrong, then H1 is true. And since the chance of H0 uh, being wrongly rejected is only small, then if you accept this hypothesis, then there's only a small chance that this hypothesis is wrong. So, Alpha significance level being small gives a strong evidence in favor of this alternate hypothesis. So that's the main crux of what we discussed last time. Now let us see uh, some cases which we will deal with. Uh, so this is like an example. I'll write what kind of case it is in the end. So you are making a claim about the mean of a normal population. So hypothesis is about the mean of a normal population. So a very common situation, you have some data and you have a population. Populations are usually normally distributed 
and you want to guess, you want you, you want to see what is the mean. So you have a hypothesis and you want to test if that mean is correct or not. What is artificial for now is hypothesis about the mean of a normal population for which standard deviation is known. In real world, as I have discussed many times, usually this is not the case. You do not know the standard deviation of the population. Sometimes you may, but the main point of discussing these examples is to develop the theory, is to develop the method that how it is done, because in this case it's more straightforward. And later on, we relax this condition. And there's only a slight change in the method is required. It's just that usually instead of using the standard normal for computing your probabilities, you consider some other distribution, Let's say for example, the T distribution. So that's your case. And uh, you're making a claim. Your null hypothesis is that your population mean is equal to some number, mu naught. So that's your null hypothesis. And for some reason, when you make a sample, you don't get this number. Well, you will definitely not get this number usually, but you get a number higher than this, for example. So you have for some, you have some evidence, some reasons to believe that the actual mean is not this one, which is being claimed in the null hypothesis. It's probably larger. So this is the null. So you propose an alternate hypothesis, H1, which says that the population mean is actually greater than this claimed value. Now, what will you do? Well, you know that if I make this variable, x the standard normal variable, because the sample mean, you, you make a sample, this is the sample mean, We know that the sample mean, if this mu naught were the actually the true mean of the population, even if that was true, in the sample, our sample mean will not be coincide with this. It will be distributed around it, but will not coincide with it. So sample mean is normally distributed around mu naught. That's why if I subtract this mu naught, around mu naught, if this hypothesis were true, remember if this hypothesis were true, true, then the population mean, this is the population mean, would be equal to mu naught, the claimed value. But even if that was true, in the sample, you will see all these values. Here, 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 here. And if you start seeing bigger values, you start suspecting. You start suspecting that maybe this hypothesis that mu is equal to mu naught is not true. Rather, the alternate hypothesis that mu is bigger than, the population mean is bigger than a mu naught is true. So you wait because you know that even if this is true, even if H naught is true, you can still get one of these numbers. So you look for a value way down over here. There's some critical value of the sample mean. If you cross this, crossing this, finding this value, if the true mean were, a, were mu naught is very unlikely. There's only a small probability. Let's say that is 0.05. So probability of 
the sample mean being greater than this certain critical value is 0 0.05 or in general some alpha which in this case I am taking to be as an example 0 0.05. If you happen to have, if you get in your sample a value bigger than this, a sample mean bigger than this critical value, then you say that this is very unlikely that this happened by chance. There's only a 0 0.05 probability that it would happen. So I reject. So if x bar is greater than x bar c, you reject h naught with the significance alpha. So this whole thing, this thing, I can write in terms of the standard normal as well. The standard normal is you subtract the actual mean, the proposed mean, and you know that sigma population standard deviation is known. So the sample standard deviation would be under root n, sigma over under root n. Standard deviation of sample mean. So this would be a standard normal. So if H naught is correct, then there is probability that Z is bigger than a certain value is alpha, where alpha is a small number, is the significance level. I draw the standard normal. I'm expecting the Z, Z to be at zero, because this standard normal created out of these variables is uh, a standard normal. If mu naught is the true mean, it will be zero. But if you find a value much higher and you have set for yourself a certain critical value, that if you find something, a z bigger than this, z alpha, that could have only happened, even if h naught were true, if with a very small probability alpha. So that's what you have written over here. If H naught is true. So therefore you set this test. Test says reject H naught if this Z is bigger than this critical value Z alpha or this x minus mu naught is greater than z alpha, where z alpha is defined like this. This, this critical value, where this area is alpha, And from here, you can also say, you can just do this algebra. So you will reject if this is true. Reject if your sample mean is greater than your, your uh, hypothesized mean, which was claimed, you go way above it. How much above it? By this level, by this much. So this I can call the critical value of the sample mean. If 
your actual sample mean is bigger than this critical value, where this is defined by this, then reject with significance alpha. Since I'm considering, uh, since the uh, sample mean has a normal distribution, so this same value alpha, I can compute this value is also, because in the books, in the charts, it's usually, so it would be one minus alpha. So let's, for example, let's take an example. So suppose you have, uh, you are, there's some company and they're filling in some boxes with some product and the average weight of the product is supposed to be 16.1. And this is what you want. This is your process is designed for this average weight. And you know that this is not, all the boxes are not filled with exactly this. There's a normal distribution with a standard deviation of 0.4. Now, for some reason, you suspect that there is more product being filled in the boxes. And you want to check that. So your null hypothesis is that the mean is 16.1 and you want to test it. Your suspicion, your alternate hypothesis is that mu naught is greater than 16.1. So uh, why is that? For example, probably you picked some sample and in those boxes you were seeing a weight bigger than 16.1. So you wanted to test it properly. So what you do, for example, you pick a sample of 25 boxes and you want to test it with a significance of 0 0.05. Your critical value for this weight, which is the sample mean critical value is as per this formula, you take the proposed, the uh, mean which is proposed in the null hypothesis. So 16.1 and add to it this value times 0.4, which is the standard deviation of the population, divided by 25. Now, if I look at this number, Z 0 0.05, this number, I don't really need to go to, maybe let me show you, or oh, let's just take my word that if I have this 0 0.05 over here, this would be 1.645. You want me to show it to you from the calculator? Let me just. This is a continuous. Okay. So uh, that means this critical value turns out to be, if I put in these numbers, 
it's 16.232. So I pick, picked a sample of 25. If this sample mean turns out to be greater than this, then I will be very suspicious. I'll say I have rejected the hypothesis that the mean weight of the boxes is 16.1 with a significance level 0 0.05. If I want to increase the significance, so suppose if alpha is chosen to be 0 0.01, only a 1% chance that I'm ejecting the hypothesis incorrectly, then I'll have to move this Z over here. Come over here so that this area is only 0 0.01. There will be a Z 0 0.01, some value would be something like 2.56. And that will go over here. What will it do? It will displace this number to some larger value. So your critical value will be larger. So you will have to see bigger departures from the proposed hypothesis to reject the hypothesis at even higher significance which makes sense. Like you are rejecting it with higher significance, then you need to see more evidence for it. And more evidence in this case means that you have very little chance of this happening if the hypothesis were true. Sir? G. Sir, is 0 0.04 value cheese, please. Is 0 0.4 here? Yeah. Job is red. With the significance of 0 0.05. This is 0 0.01. I said, what if I want a bigger significance? I want to be even more sure about rejecting this hypothesis. Then what will I need? I will need a smaller significance number. So a very small area here. Before I had this one, this all area, which corresponded to this number. This is at zero. Now I have even smaller area. So my Z will be shifted here. It will be a bigger number because I'm pushing it to the ta tail of the normal. So that means the number which I'll put here in this equation, now will be a bigger number. That will mean that I'll need bigger departures from the proposed null hypothesis to, con to reject it at a higher significance. Higher significance, you say higher significance, but it's a smaller number. So I hope it's clear. Yes, sir. Thank you. Now, what if I have a situation, let's say case two, again, you know the standard deviation of population, but your null hypothesis is of this kind that the population mean is less than a particular number. In that case, the alternate hypothesis, you don't even need to suspect that how to choose it. It's just the complementary. The, uh, the alternate hypothesis is just, if this is not true, what would be true? Then the population mean would be greater than this. So your claim is that the population mean is less than or equal to a certain value and the alternate is that it's bigger than that. So what will you do then? Well, we consider the worst case scenario. 
So this is the mu naught. And I'm saying that the population mean could be over here, or here, or here, or here, or here, anywhere over there. If I see a number here, then obviously I cannot reject it because I said that the population mean is in this whole range, it can be anything in this whole range. So I will have to see numbers over here. Now, if I see a number over here, it could mean many different things. It could mean that the true mean of the population is here and the normal distribution, for example, of the sample means take this form. If the two mean were here, then I couldn't see this over here. But the worst case scenario would be that the two mean is here. Because then the tail of the normal will have the possibility of including this value at far away from the null hypothesis just by chance. So that means I have to consider this worst case scenario. To reject the null hypothesis. So if I consider the null case, uh, worst case scenario, then it's just like the previous case. So again, reject if the sample mean is bigger than this critical value of the sample mean, which is exactly the same. You go to the boundary over here and add to it this number. So you make a sweep from the boundary and you're counting how far you can go with a certain significance level. Similarly, then you can imagine uh, this case. I can obviously reverse this. So what if X bar is equal to mu naught? Let me consider both cases at once. That the null hypothesis is that no, not the X bar, the mu population mean. The null hypothesis is that the population mean is bigger than a certain number. And the alternate is that it's less than. So now what you have, again, you have a certain, uh, you have this mu naught, the, and this includes all the values in H naught. So this time you look in this side of the tail. So if your X, your sample mean is less than this number, this critical number where this area is just the, your significance value, then you will reject it with this significance. So if I draw Z, then this is some Z, uh, let me call it z tilde, 0 0.05. Let's say if the significance is 0 0.05. And if z is less than this critical value, instead of greater than, then you reject it. 
eject. So just looking up from here, reject if x, so because your, this variable is x minus mu naught, x bar minus mu naught over sigma over under root n. So if it's less than this value, the lower tail, let's call it alpha, then reject where this is defined that if z is less than the z bar alpha, that probability is alpha. So from here, you can say that if x bar is less than mu naught plus z bar alpha sigma over under root n. However, notice that this z bar alpha is going to be a negative number. Because z standard normal is centered at z is equal to zero. So the numbers on this side are negative. Actually, this z bar alpha will be exactly same if you were computing z alpha, which is the number for which this probability is z being greater than z alpha is equal to alpha because it's a symmetric distribution. Where this z alpha would be the minus time z tilde alpha. So if z tilde alpha is a negative number, z alpha would be exactly same number but with positive sign. So I can also write it like this. And the idea is simple. In this graph, you have mu naught and you are looking now on the other side. So if you cross a certain threshold and reach a very far away point from the proposed mean, then you reject. So that's why this negative sign is coming in or you are subtracting a negative number from here. Now let's discuss uh, the example which we were considering last time. That time we were just discussing it, but let's now do it with some numbers. So it was like that you have, uh, you want to see that they, they, they are these people who are proposing that uh, whipping the horses during the races should be stopped. And they want to get, so this is now a point which we discussed last time as well, but let's emphasize. They want to bring strong evidence that whipping horses excessively actually reduces their speed. So as we discussed last time, and as I hinted at the beginning of the lecture, that if you reject H naught, your null hypothesis with a certain significance, then the other one is accepted with a strong probability. So if you want to gather evidence, if you want to prove something, you should assume the opposite of it. So in this case, the null hypothesis, well, let's say uh, the correct way to do would it would be like you compare horses which are whipped and those which are not whipped. 
but uh, that would be another topic which you are not discussing today. So let's just discuss, uh, let's just do it in a slightly different manner. Let's suppose there's a certain spe speed, let's say 55 kilometers per hour. And they say that if a horse runs at 55 kilometer per hour or greater, then that's a good race. So they choose the null hypothesis that for the whipped horses, the average, because every horse is gonna run at a different speed, but they're saying that the average speed of the whipped horses is greater than this number. Whatever this number is, let's say this is the number which you need to win a race or for a good run is 55 kilometer per hour. And they know that different horses run at different speeds, different days. And for some reason, they know that the standard deviation in horses' speeds is three kilometer per hour. So this is known. And this is the hypothesis. They want to prove the opposite of it, that the whipped horses, they run slower than this good race. But they assume the opposite of it. And the alternate is that mu, the average speed is less than 55. So what would be the critical value? They take, let's say they run nine horses and whip them and they find that x, the average speed, average sample speed is 53.36. No, let's say 52.5. So the question is, is it's not. So the horses are running slower in the sample, but the question is, have they enough evidence to reject the hypothesis? They want to say we have strong evidence. Is it's not rejected at 0 0.05 significance level? So they all they have to do this was the sample speed. They have to compute.